This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aotearoa's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in Aotearoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. We start today's show with the official reveal of Volvo's EX90, a full-size, three-row, all-electric SUV that will be sold alongside the XC90 from 2024 onwards. The EX90 is a vehicle whose design is evolutionary rather than revolutionary, and it's unmistakably a Volvo from every angle. And underneath that practical exterior, there's a whole load of onboard Volvo safety tech, most noticeably a full LiDAR sensor suite embedded just above the front windscreen designed to enhance autonomous capabilities. Vehicle-to-grid functionality is also standard, and Volvo claims the launch edition will offer upwards of 300 miles, 482 kilometres from its 100 10 kilowatt hour usable battery pack. Volvo will build the car in China and the US in order to take advantage of US regulations, where it will cost from 80,000 US dollars. If you're in the market for a Kia EV6 and you live in the US, I'm afraid I've got some pretty bad news. The cost to get behind the wheel has gone up by 7,100 US dollars. Built on Hyundai Kia's all-electric eGMP platform, the Kia EV6 is frankly one of the best electric cars you can get today, combining a range of powertrain choices with a powerful 800 volt battery pack for super fast rapid charging. But this week we learned that Kia is dropping the entry level 58 kilowatt hour pack base light trim for the 20 2023 model year. This means you'll now need to pay 49,795 US dollars to get the new entry level model, the rear wheel drive EV6 Wind, which has a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack. Frankly, it's a bad move, Kia. Back in 2019, Audi launched its first all-electric model in the form of the Audi e-tron, a boxy SUV that offered a competent, if not necessarily sporty, drive. But that original Audi e-tron had some issues, most noticeably its range, just 204 miles, 328 kilometers from a 95 kilowatt hour pack on the EPA test cycle. So for the mid-cycle refresh announced this week for the 2023 model year, Audi has fixed that particular problem and given the e-tron a makeover as well. It's now going to be called the Audi Q8 e-tron and both SUV and Sportback variants get a new front grille that is closer to that of the one found on the Q4 e-tron. There's a beefed up rear motor, improved aerodynamics all round and a larger battery pack that Audi says will hopefully reach 300 miles, that's 482 kilometers on the US EPA test cycle. There's been quite a lot of politics in the news this week, thanks to multiple elections around the world and what their impacts mean for each country's respective citizens. Not to mention continued upheaval in the UK as the new Prime Minister struggles to take the reins. But in France, there's some really freaking good news from the French Senate, namely a new piece of legislation that will require all car parks or parking lots with more than 80 spaces to be covered by photovoltaic solar panels. Starting from July 1st next year, the new legislation will start a timer for car parks to implement solar panel installations with the larger car parks, that's ones with larger than 400 spaces required to install panels first. Smaller car parks will have longer to come into compliance with the law. According to the French government, a total of 11 gigawatts of solar power will be added to the electrical grid as a result of this new rule. Tesla had its worst week for more than two years on the stock market this week, dropping its value to levels not seen since May 2021 and falling more than 8% in value in just one week. The reason? Twitter, or rather Elon Musk's recent acquisition of Twitter. As Elon Musk struggles to stop users and advertisers from fleeing the platform and fighting the growth of fake accounts, pausing signups for Twitter Blue early on Friday as a consequence, Musk reportedly told employees in an email this week that, quote, without significant subscription revenue, there is good chance Twitter will not survive the upcoming economic downturn, end quote. And to try and keep things afloat and satisfy his loan commitments, Elon Musk has been selling more Tesla stock. Several institutional investors are also selling stock, calling Tesla, quote, unquote, tarnished.
Rivian posted its quarterly earnings report midweek, posting a growth in vehicle production and deliveries, increased revenues, but widening losses. Rivian produced a total of 7,363 vehicles in the quarter and delivered 6,584 vehicles, a significant increase for both metrics over the previous quarter. In terms of financials, Rivian posted revenue of $536 million, missing Wall Street estimates of $550 million. It posted a one point $7 billion loss, equivalent to an adjusted $1.57 per share, thanks to an ongoing negative gross profit. Rivian has warned that loss will continue while it builds its new production facility. That said, Rivian confirmed in its quarterly report that it should reach its targeted 25,000 vehicle production goal set for the year. Sticking with quarterlies, Lucid also posted its quarterly earnings this week, showing similar movement to Rivian with increased production and delivery, but widening losses. Also similar to Rivian, Lucid is still building up its production line, meaning overheads are higher than they will eventually be. That said, there's some good movement, with Lucid making 2,282 vehicles in the quarter, triple that of Q2. Of those, only 1,398 were delivered. Revenue was reported at $195.5 million, while the company still reports having $3.8 billion on hand in cash, while the company lost $670 million, equivalent to $0.40 cents per share, diluted. Lucid says it now has more than 34,000 vehicle reservations, meaning it still has a significant order backlog. For years, Toyota was a brand synonymous with environmentally conscious driving thanks to its Prius hybrid, a car which eventually became its own sub-brand at the firm. But those who know Toyota's past with electric cars will know that the brand has never been particularly keen on electric vehicles, choosing instead to focus on squeezing out every last bit of money from hybrids and investing heavily in hydrogen fuel cells instead. This week, Toyota's green credentials took a beating when Influence Map, a company that examines how businesses and financial institutions are affecting climate change and climate policy, ranked Toyota 10th on its list of the 10 most negative influential companies on climate policy. Toyota was joined by fellow Japanese company Nippon Steel, but with the exception of BASF and Gazprom, every other company on the list was a US energy firm. Yes. It's depressing. Tesla has been growing its solar energy business this year, recording its highest ever residential deployment in the second quarter. But now it's pulling back. According to reports this week, Tesla has been cancelling residential solar deployments across the US, with reports that it's completely halting solar panel deployment in some markets for private customers, instead focusing on massive, large-scale projects. Electrek reports this week that customers in the greater LA area, Northern California, Oregon and Florida have all received emails stating Tesla will no longer serve customers there, with some customers who have placed deposits due to receive a refund very shortly. That said, some customers apparently are mid-install while others already have their systems installed and commissioned. It's not a good look for Tesla and if you are one of those affected people, we would love to hear what your plans are looking forwards. Ford's F-150 Lightning pickup truck has been one of the most important electric vehicle launches of the year, and it's not just because I happen to own one. In addition to being the first mass-produced electric truck from a mainstream automaker, the F-150 Lightning is the first electric vehicle to offer whole house backup capabilities and, of course, the first electric pickup to offer a work trim variant in the form of the F-150 Lightning Pro. But now it's got another first to add to its list. It's the first all-electric pickup truck to be reconstructed in full, one-to-one -one scale in Lego. The finished project took 1,600 hours to build and includes nearly 321,000 Lego bricks, which are supported by a custom internal support structure. It weighs about two-thirds of the weight of a real F-150 Lightning. And yes, the model includes LED lights just like the original. Before we get to the last two stories, a quick question. Are you in the market for a new electric car? Well, if you are and you live in Aotearoa, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It is packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about incentives you can get, charging providers you can charge up with, and of course, how to get clean energy at home. So follow the link below and start your journey today. 
Our next story offers some good news for fans of the iconic Cowley production facility in the UK, where the Mini Cooper SE is currently made. A few weeks ago, I told you that BMW had decided not to produce the successor to the current Mini Cooper SE at that facility in Oxford, England, choosing instead to switch production of Mini's electric models to China and Germany. But now, it appears that the Oxford facility may get a reprieve, with a report from Germany suggesting that BMW's board of directors are still finalising their decision. While the Oxford facility will need a sizeable investment and retrofitting to be able to produce new mini models, the company appears to be considering it, which would be great news for everyone at the facility and UK mini fans. Of course, as this is a developing story, we'll keep you abreast of developments. And finally... Talking of developing stories, when we started prep for today's show, Tesla's supercharger socket design was still very much a proprietary design. But now, it isn't. That's because on Friday, Tesla published a blog post on its website entitled Opening the North American Charging Standard, in which it announced that it would make all of its technical specifications on its supercharger connector, which it now refers to as NACS, North American Charge Standard, free to view by anyone and everyone. It's all part of a move by Tesla to usurp CCS as the charge standard of choice. And it's something that Aptera has been campaigning for for a long time. So I know the folks there will be very happy indeed. I know many people watching this video will want us to cheer for this and we do welcome the opening of the standard to all. But this news could also fracture the EV industry further than it already is. So we all need to step very carefully. And on that note, we are done for the day. But before I go, just a quick reminder to make sure that you hit subscribe and the notification bell for this channel, as well as make sure that you keep checking just in case YouTube is playing its funny games and doesn't tell you that there's a new video from the team. And while you're at it, why not switch to Aotearoa's only 100% carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. It is super easy to make that switch. And in doing so, you'll help the country wean itself off dirty energy and onto fossil fuels that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I will be back soon with more great content, as will the lovely Gavin Kiwi Evi Shoebridge. So until next time, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! Take care!